OpenAI working for the Pentagon, Musk's startup launches a new multimodal model, and Google's $100 billion investment in AI. This, plus space robots, miniature brain chips, and more in this week's news update. Let's get it. The humanoid robot race continues, and here's another company coming out of the shadows. Meet the prototype from Menti Robotics, an Israeli startup that has gathered under its roof not only roboticists, but also major scientists in the field of artificial intelligence. Menti Robotics is developing a humanoid robot which it says will be able to understand commands in natural language. The first prototype reportedly uses AI literally everywhere. The robot's movement is based on a new machine learning method called Simulated Reality Sim to Real. In this method, reinforcement learning takes place using a virtual version of the robot, which means it can use as much data as it needs to learn and then respond to the real world with as little information as needed. It maps its world with NERF-based methods, which is the latest neural network technology for representing 3D. Semantic knowledge is stored in these cognitive maps, which the computer can query to find things and places. The mentee robot can then determine where it is on the 3D map and automatically plan a dynamic path to avoid obstacles. Through all of this, the current prototype demonstrates an end-to-end -end cycle of complex tasks including navigation, locomotion, scene understanding, object detection, grasping, and natural language understanding. However, this is just the beginning. For now, the developers see two markets for their robot, home assistants and warehouse workers. The company promises to present the final prototype in the first quarter of 2025. At the same time, the production of smart robots should begin. All in all, it seems that in 2025, it will be possible to do dropshipping of intelligent humanoid robots because there's just more and more of them every day, and they're all about to go into production. Hmm, what gives? By the way, the total direct investment in robotics in March of 2024 amounted to $642 million. In just one month, 37 companies received this funding. And that's not a lot, really, considering February's volume of $2 billion. This market is growing rapidly, so keep your ears peeled for our latest updates from the world of high tech. Details of Sanctuary AI and Magna International's collaboration have just been released. The developers are not only going to test their humanoid Phoenix at Magna's factories, but also produce the robots there themselves. After all, the robot will soon become a commercial project. In the beginning, the factory will have a robot on wheels. This is due to the fact that Phoenix will specialize in complex handling situations, not just dragging things from place to place. That is, movement will not be as important as working with its hands. Then, as part of the experiment, the robot will collect data in a commercial environment to generate autonomous behavior. And when the robot's AI becomes as capable as, say, GPT, that is based on input data, the company will release a new version of Phoenix, more versatile and with greater capabilities. This is all expected to happen as early as, you guessed it, 2025. Since robots are about to become ubiquitous technology, which we've discussed in our previous video found in the description below, then why not let them fix each other? That's what engineers from the Unleashed project decided to do who recently presented the kitchen skills of their open source Aloha Learning home robot. Engineers from Google DeepMind are also involved in the project. They are now teaching the bots how to tie shoelaces, hang laundry, and repair other robots. The robots at each station are fully autonomous. For instance, after teaching one bot to hang up a shirt, engineers threw a sweater into its work area. The bot was then able to generalize its knowledge and handle the new task without prior training. But the most impressive demonstration was replacing another robot's fingers, bringing back memories of Skynet, especially since we're about to be introduced to general artificial intelligence. What do you guys think about this? Should robots repair each other themselves or should we leave this to humans? And the Pentagon will use OpenAI's Dolly to detect targets. Yes, there's nothing left of Sam Altman's pacifism since pecunia non olet. 
which is why, after receiving investments from Microsoft, the company started to cooperate with the military. How can generative AI be used in this area? Well, the US Air Force is developing the JADC2 system, which is supposed to integrate data from all branches of the military, including data from drones, radar, and tanks to coordinate military operations. Microsoft sees the potential of Dolly as a tool to train this system, so that the neural network could create artificial images that would improve visualization of the battlefield and help systems more accurately identify their targets. So far, algorithm training is yet to begin, at least according to public sources, and some are even skeptical that it will at all, since the military doesn't tend to trust existing AI models. Whatever the outcome, we already talked about Sam Altman's plans for AI world domination in our video found in the description below. Elon Musk's XAI has released its first multimodal AI model, Grok 1.5 Vision. The neural network can work with text, documents, diagrams, screenshots, and photos. The new version is capable of converting information from images into various formats, writing creative texts, and even giving advice on home renovations. The company claims that Grok 1.5V outperforms other AI models in various tests, but we already know that this is not always an indicator. Such superiority is traditionally boasted by Google, but in practice, the most popular model still remains GPT. If we talk about real-life examples of Grok's work, a user can share an image of a flowchart and the model will then translate it into, for instance, Python code. By showing a nutritional label, the user can find out how many calories they'll get from a certain portion of a product. The model can also take a child's drawing and build an entire bedtime story around it. If you show Grok a meme, the model will explain why it's funny and provide the context needed to understand it. Grok can also convert a table to CSV, thank God, or help fix a broken piece of code. If you need advice on home renovations, well, Grok got you covered as well. All you have to do is share images of the property and the model will give you a suggestion. Grok 1.5v will soon be available to both testers and the public. Stay tuned. As for Tesla, it's not doing all that well. The loss of leadership in the electric car market has hurt the company. Just last year, it lost the title of the world's top electric car manufacturer to China's BYD, which produced a bit over 3 million electric cars compared to Tesla's 1.8. After looking at all this, Elon Musk got some restructuring done and fired two directors as well as about 10% of the employees, which is close to 14,000 people. The media immediately linked the layoffs to Tesla shutting down its $25,000 budget electric car program. And although Musk called Reuters out for lying, there are persistent rumors that most of those fired worked on this very project. On the other hand, since there are still no results on it, perhaps Elon decided that it was about the team and it needed to be renewed. Still, many are sure that Musk realized that it's too hard to compete with China in terms of price, and it's better to focus on robo-taxis before the Chinese occupy this niche as well. What do you guys think? Share your thoughts in the comments. The AI race is in full swing, ladies and gentlemen. After the announcement of OpenAI and Microsoft's plans to invest $100 billion in a supercomputer, the director of Google's AI division, Dennis Hassabis, said that over time, the company plans to actually invest even more and will eclipse the efforts of OpenAI and Microsoft. Quote, we're not talking specific numbers, but I think we're investing more over time. And quote, Hassabis responded at a TED conference in Vancouver. He also said that Alphabet Inc. has superior computing power compared to competitors, including Microsoft. Stock up on popcorn, folks. This is going to be slow, but fun. Engineers at the ETH Zurich lab have tested a three-legged jumping robot for asteroids in zero gravity. True, not in space yet, but in an airplane. Space Hopper is being developed for traveling on the surfaces of asteroids and other space bodies with extremely low gravity where the robot will search for valuable minerals. The current Space Hopper prototype consists of a triangular airspace aluminum body with articulated legs on each corner. Each of the legs in turn has knee and hip joints. Two motors drive the hip through a differential drive mechanism while the third is responsible for the knee. 
The robot is omnidirectional and is equipped with deep learning based software. It's responsible for joint leg movements, maintaining proper body orientation during flight and performing controlled landings at predetermined locations. During weightlessness tests, the robot jumped in a certain direction and tried to maintain the correct body position in the air. Such a shame the old Atlas had to quit its somersaults. NASA, meanwhile, has finally approved the launch of the Dragonfly rotorcraft to Saturn's satellite Titan. There, the vehicle will have to explore the most promising areas in search of signs of chemical evolution that preceded the emergence of life on Earth. The project will cost NASA over $3 billion and the launch date has been set for July of 2020. You guessed it. No, not 25, but 28. The launch date has been set for July 2028. The rotorcraft has eight supporting propellers and flies like a large drone. Flying from place to place, the vehicle will study the chemistry of the area using a backscatter system and a mass spectrometer. It will also record local weather patterns and seismic data, which will help learn more about Titan's internal structure. And deep robotics engineers are having fun pushing their Light 3 robot around. It's worth noting that it's a pleasure to watch how quickly the robot manages to stand on all fours and how persistently it continues its mission after falling. I wish I had that persistence. In the wake of the boom of humanoid robots, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology decided to remind everyone they're here. The engineers are trying to make Armar robots smarter by using the Makeable platform. The point of the platform is to optimize the exchange of acquired skills and experience between robots and contexts. This results in a system for autonomous processing of both familiar and new objects in different contexts. Practical tests confirm its effectiveness in a number of scenarios involving different robots in tasks such as object grasping, coordinated use of both hands, and skill sharing between humanoid robots. All in all, it's a work in progress, and here's another humanoid robot gearing up to become successful. Engineers at Rice University have developed a miniaturized brain stimulation implant that could revolutionize the treatment of depression and other psychiatric or neurological disorders. Obviously, going for a jog or drinking three cups of water a day is irrelevant at this point, so the pea-sized device uses pioneering magnetoelectric power transfer technology to deliver power wirelessly to the brain. The chip is placed in the bone over the desired area of the brain, and according to the developers, it'd be a minimally invasive operation lasting 30 minutes, after which the patient can just go home. At the same time, the chip and the incision will be almost invisible. Researchers have said that they have already tested the technology on a human. The implant activated the motor cortex of the patient's brain, and as a result of which, he was able to move his arm. What do you guys think of this gem? Subscribe to the channel and send us your love by liking this and other videos. We also got a Telegram channel where you can always find the latest news and the coolest videos. So stick around and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.